Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, the last time I was live on Instagram, there were a few people asking questions, and some of those questions were very, very concerning. They were really questions of great concern. People were asking, Are you allowed to be intimate with your spouse during the fast? Now, that is quite a strange question, but then again, there are people who probably are ignorant. Fasting from dawn to dusk means you abstain from food and drink, you abstain from foul language and so on. You also abstain from sexual intercourse and, you know, sexual intimacy with your spouse during the daylight hours. Now, that which is haram and prohibited is obviously haram inside and outside of Ramadan. If someone was doing something haram and were to engage in haram sexual acts during the fast, then that would be a double sin. One for it being haram uh, and two for it to be breaking the fast in that way. But another very, very important point is your own spouse as well. You cannot have uh, sexual relations with your own spouse during the daylight hours of Ramadan. At night, it is permissible. The Quran expressly mentions the night and says that it is permissible. So it's not like you have to stay away from your spouse for the entire month, but rather in the night when, when you're allowed to eat and drink, then you're also allowed to engage in sexual uh, relations with your spouse. But my brothers and sisters, if someone does do that during the daylight hours of Ramadan, then it is a major sin and in order to compensate for that you would have to fast 60 consecutive fasts after Ramadan and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is something that people don't like to discuss but it, it needs to be discussed someone also asked in the live session is it permissible to masturbate during the fast does it break the fast the answer is it definitely breaks the fast and you would have to make that fast again sometime after Ramadan and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those were the two matters that I decided to uh, speak on. It's not so common for people to speak on this, but I think people needed to know this. The issue of masturbation, it definitely breaks the fast. And if you have done this, then you need to do two things. You need to compensate that one fast that, you, that was broken due to that masturbation. And at the same time, you need to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what happens. And if it was proper intimacy where there were sexual relations that took place between a spouse or between spouses, then not only is the fast broken and not only do you have to seek the forgiveness of Allah, but there is a huge penalty for that. Uh, if it was haram and a person actually did something that was prohibited, uh, then it makes the matter even worse, which means if you had sexual relations uh, in, in, a, in an adulterous way or fornication during the, the fast, then it's worse because that is prohibited even if you're not fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. You know, I was in two minds whether to talk about this or not, but many people told me, no, look, these questions were asked and they were asked several times during the live session. So therefore, please, can you address this? I mean, imagine people thinking masturbation is OK and it doesn't break your fast and they keep on fasting. In fact, you would also need a ghusl. Uh, if a person were to masturbate, not only is the fast broken, but their their wudu and ghusl is actually nullified. They would need to bathe again before they can pray or read the Quran. So please remember these rules. And like I say, it's, it's difficult to, to talk about it. But subhanallah, I think you would appreciate that someone had to say it. Uh, sadly, it had to be me. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us. Similarly, I just want to, since we are here, I just want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, half of Ramadan is over. Please take it seriously. Engage in lots of ibadah. You never know, this might be your last Ramadan that you're ever going to see. Uh, I know of people who are sick and ill. The brother Ismail Muhammad is not well at all. And we must pray for not just him, but for all others who are not well. Uh, they're all in our minds, in our hearts, in our duas, in our prayers, in our thoughts. Uh, so pray for those who are sick and ill, pray for the mercy of those who have passed away. And at the same time, my beloved brothers and sisters, pray for yourself too. And uh, try to improve your behavior, 
try to improve who you are as a person. These are the days of Ramadan. They're supposed to impact upon you. You're supposed to develop your relationship with Allah. Take them seriously. The last nights are probably the most uh, crucial nights of Ramadan. So if you are uh, wasting them, you would have wasted such blessed moments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease. Uh, similarly, when it comes to the uh, last of the odd nights of Ramadan, uh, Laylatul Qadr, which is the night of decree, where the decree is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the coming year, that is called Al Qadr or Taqdir. Uh, it's all connected to the same root, uh, the night of decree. Uh, it shows and depicts the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, make a lot of dua and engage in some form of extra act of worship, even if it is just dua. A lot of us are very lazy when it comes to taraweeh, when it comes to extra dua, extra tilawa and recitation of the Quran, supplication. Please don't be lazy. These are not days to be lazy. We must make sure that we have done the best that we can uh, and at least seek the forgiveness of Allah. So a question arises, what is the best supplication I could make? The best supplication you could make is to seek for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek the forgiveness by saying, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Some might add to it, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun rahimun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. It's okay to add that because that is, uh, those are different names and qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you may ask Allah in that particular way. It's a very good dua. And that goes to show that achieving forgiveness is by far one of the most important things that we, uh, or blessings that we can achieve of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive every one of us and uh, to make us from those who are not lazy during these days. A few more days remaining, inshallah, be strong, keep going. You know, and uh, before you know it, Ramadan will be over. Don't spend the time in a way that you regret. Uh, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us and truly we can all, that we can all achieve uh, that forgiveness from Ramadan that we are supposed to be achieving. Uh, another quick point, and I will raise this again in the future. Let's not come out of Ramadan as though the Lord of Ramadan and the Lord outside Ramadan were two different Lords but rather the same Lord in Ramadan is outside Ramadan. So when we come out of Ramadan, let's be from those who've changed. At least we've changed something positively. Uh, remember, if you hurt someone, you shall be hurt in return one day. If you do something against someone, you will definitely pay the price of it. So seek forgiveness, make amends, become a better person. There are so many things that, inshallah, I have to talk about, but we'll keep it in small doses and we'll keep these live sessions going. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again uh, grant us all goodness, success in this world, Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah help those who are struggling with debt to pay that debt. May Allah help those who are struggling with difficulty and hardship uh, to alleviate that difficulty and hardship. May He do that for them. Those who are struggling to find spouses to get married, may Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. I always say you want to marry a certain type of a person. Do you think that person would actually want to marry the type of person you are? So try to be the person whom you believe a spouse you want to have would be looking for. That's quite a deep statement, but it's a very, very important point. Uh, may Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.